Hello everyone and welcome to episode 34 of the Nurtured by Nature podcast. Today I'm delighted to be joined in conversation by Megan, a herbalist based in Yorkshire in the UK. In this inspiring conversation, Megan shares how her fascination with herbal medicine began when trying to find a solution for her own long-term health issues. She reminds us that symptoms are simply messages from our body, an opportunity for us to listen and pay attention, and not something to be feared. Having studied both Western herbal medicine and Ayurveda, her nurturing approach to embracing herbal wisdom in your life encourages us to trace the messages back and what you will normally discover is one of just a handful of core imbalances that can then be addressed. We delve into the amazing benefits of utilising herbs and she reminds us that our relationship with herbs should be approached in a similar way to a relationship with other people, moving beyond simply what someone can do for us to understanding the intricate levels of their unique personality. Through it all, Megan offers the most important guidance that now, more than ever, we need to foster our skills of discernment to make healthier choices for both ourselves and our natural world, to which we are inextricably linked. Welcome, Megan, and thank you so much for joining us today on this episode of the Nurtured by Nature podcast. I'm really looking forward to our conversation today and learning from you. And uh, as I just feel like we're true akin spirits on mm. our approach to health and well-being. So, but to get us started, I like to just ask my guests to share a little bit about their nature story and really sort of how nature has perhaps been a part of your life or influenced you or any fond memories from childhood. You can just run with it how you want and interpret it how you want. So if you've got something to share, that'd be lovely. Sure. Um, well, I don't have the kind of classic, um, or I guess maybe expected of a herbalist <laughs> childhood nature story I was kind of the opposite I I was always a bookworm oh. I was inside I was in suburbia in Florida <laughs> um, oh, wow. yeah which I'm kind of I'm really regretting not getting that vitamin d now mm. that I live in Yorkshire I'm like oh I should have should have should have stopped up then what was Topped I thinking up on the sunshine <laughs> oh it's hot no I'm like oh it's yeah. cold <laughs> um <laughs> But yeah, my street was just a kind of typical suburban street and I was pretty much the only girl on my street as well and I wasn't a tomboy. So okay. <laughs> I didn't really have any kind of, you know, on your street childhood playmates. So there wasn't yeah. a lot of... Um, Outdoor time, I guess. Yeah, well, I had yeah. mandatory outside playtime actually. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd sort of go outside with a book yeah. And just sort of harumph and then be like, okay, am I done now? Can I go yeah. back inside? <laughs> Watching the clock. <laughs> yeah. But my mum um, always really enjoyed, uh, you know, gardening. So I enjoyed going to the garden center with her. Yeah. Um, and more sort of picking out flowers and the, the color schemes yeah, than okay. doing the actual the actual digging. <laughs> yeah, I would observe. Um, but uh, throughout my life, I... I had a lot of gut issues. Okay. Um, and growing up, we just sort of did all the the conventional stuff. Yeah. Um, I I lived on Pepto Bismol. Um, see, that's it's quite tough. Yeah. yeah. Well, I didn't know that was any different. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and fortunately, the taste wasn't horrendous, or maybe yeah. unfortunately, I don't know. And yeah. of course, now we know. Um, I think they've changed the formula, but now we know that um, Pepto Bismol um, taking excessive amounts can create all kinds of um, other conditions. Issues. Yeah, <laughs> other issues, shall we yeah. say? Um, yeah. So I didn't know that that wasn't normal, and then as I went to uni, I sort of met other people um, and understood. Oh, right. Mm, okay. Maybe, maybe I should do something about this. Um, and I think there's there's that interesting time when you're at uni when you know you think you're an adult, but you're not really. <laughs> but it is your your first test run really yeah. in taking care of yourself yeah. Yeah. and how you do that. Um and my mom had always uh been interested in natural 
remedies. So she used to take us to what we called the health food store. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, uh, and we would go in there and it was always been like, oh, you know, what is this? So we, we weren't a kind of classic crunchy family. We were a yeah. really sort of mainstream suburban yeah. family who happened to go to the health food store sometimes for some things. But then my mom started learning more and more. And as she learned more, I learned more. And mm-hmm. then as I got older, I would learn about different things and say, oh, mom, have you heard about this? And, she, you know, she'd send me this article, oh, get rid of aluminium in your kitchen. And then I'd yeah. send another one back like, oh, have you seen the, yeah. you know, what paracetamol yeah. does to the gut? So we had this sort of, you know, learning together. Oh, that's beautiful. Um, I love I love that. Um, I think this is this is one of the things I love about my podcast is like, you know, like you said, you, you didn't have that typical like nature immersed story but like nature still found you and it's like yeah. and I love that and I think that's really powerful for people to remember because maybe if they're sitting here listening to this and they're like well I grew up in you know more urban environment I've never really paid a huge amount of attention to things mm-hmm. it's like it's still a world that's possible for you like you yeah, don't yeah. have to have been part of it from you know age zero yeah and, um, so I, lo- I love that part about your story and um something else I I found from my own experience is it is quite often when you have this sort of health challenge of your own mm-hmm. that in sort of modern modern medicine for want of a better description of it does fail you mm-hmm. in terms of they're not able to offer you anything other than things to sort of manage the symptoms I guess mm-hmm. really is the situation you were sitting in with your Pepto-Bismol was like it was just trying to make your life comfortable but not actually tackling what was causing it and yes and then that's where people tend to sort of come to like the the more I, don't, I hate the word alternatives but for one, for one of an, original <laughs> original yeah <laughs> but, and a ways of approaching their health and mm-hmm. and that's that's sort of what your journey has been, isn't it? Is you've you've come from that place of personal experience. Yeah. And I, you know, until I finally found uh it was a sort of seasonal series of herbal medicine workshops. And when I was looking for, I didn't even know the word herbalism yeah. or herbal medicine. I, yeah. I knew what I was looking for, but I didn't know what it was called. And I went on these workshops took a train out of London, went down to the the south of the UK. And we learned about herbs, we learned about our bodies. And part of it was we went on a walk through the grounds because we were on a farm. And our tutor was saying, okay, and here's this and here's that and it does this and it does that. And suddenly, the world around you goes from this generic wash of green leaves (laughs) to, whoa, it's just, you know, it's, it's that mind blowing moment where suddenly it's like the lights are turned on and you can see the world around you, which makes it for somebody growing up with mandatory outside playtime far more interesting. Yeah. (laughs) Um, and then, of course, the academic in me was like, oh, I have to go learn this, I have to go learn it. But it just, it lit something up in me and I, everything connected. It's not that there's nature out there. We are also part of nature. Yeah. yeah. It's a symbiotic relationship. Well, the, you know, multiple angles, web of relationship. It's a conversation that's never stopped happening between humans and plants and animals and insects and everything it's just that humans have stopped listening you know so i'm I'm not participating in this conversation now and the rest of nature is like too bad because i'm not going to stop talking (laughs) and i think the world we live in now is um you know nature the isn't the rest of nature the non-human bits are screaming loudly enough yeah. That those of us who didn't grow up feeling that connection are having to are forced to start to listen. Yeah. And a lot of people are getting switched on to a lot of the things about society today, the way we live, what we put yeah. in our bodies, what we put the, on our bodies. Sort of stress and all the toxins and chemicals yeah. that we're exposed to. We've kind of we've kind of reached like I guess it's almost like a tipping point really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is where 
we've kind of we've got to the stage that actually our bodies are like going we can't cope with this anymore we literally, yeah. we literally, we literally can't cope and the options that um you know when you go to the doctor or and things that they're offering you on actually offering the solutions mm. and it's just, just just mute it just put yeah. it on mute just silence yeah. it <laughs> crack on or they don't even listen to you I think that's part mm. of, was part of your story as well wasn't it was it just mm-hmm. a sort of like well that's it that's how it is you know just mm. kind of crack take on a paracetamol and go yeah. home <laughs> yeah get on with it you're and, fine and I was like I'm not yeah. I'm not fine <laughs> I'm not fine um you know I've I've got some really good friends who you know I've grown up with yeah. and as I started getting I guess seeing the rest of nature around me a lot of my friends bless them were like why are you cleaning the flat with vinegar you're making the flat stink you know or <laughs> whatever why are you doing this or okay you know it's Megan we love her she's a bit you know out there <laughs> yeah. and you know t- I mean these are friends I've had for a really long time 10 years on they're going, remember those things that I thought were really way out there that you <laughs> used to do? Yeah. I do that now too. And <laughs> actually I've got a lot of really similar concerns or I had a, um, one of my good friends has a, a little one like I do and she had bought some greenwashed toothpaste mm. and one day she she came across something that that said that there was some ingredient in her greenwashed toddler's toothpaste yeah, yeah. that was like toxic and it was allowed in the states but it wasn't allowed in the EU it was something like that yeah, i yeah. forget the details and she was like she messaged me and she said it was the, I mean, the light had been turned on. Yeah, oh my yeah. God. And I was like, yeah. yeah. And she goes, I just stood at my bathroom at one o'clock in the morning, looking at everything going, what is this? Yeah. And then she said, oh, I'm so, you know, I always thought you were a bit kooky, but like, I'm so glad that I, you know, yeah. you've been doing this stuff for ages. So I can just ask you what to use yeah. for my toddler's toothpaste and said, and then she said, wait a minute how much do you know it was you know it was like the pandora's <laughs> yeah. box and i was like we'll just go step by step here <laughs> it, i mean i um i had a guest uh, a few months ago actually uh, jessica and she's based in the us mm. and she's really passionate about um like home products and and skincare mm-hmm, products mm-hmm. And, and that side of it and she was saying about um like the struggles with actually the labeling and how little they have mm-hmm. to put on and how there is basically just not enough responsibility um for for the companies to label accurately and mm-hmm. it's a, I find a lot of people when they when they have children it's like suddenly they have this you know it's easier to do for others isn't it is a common <laughs> common theme for for people mm-hmm. in general and when you have a, a a child you want to do the absolute best for them and and it is these light bulb moments of you're like oh wow like okay, it was, it was okay to kind of put it on my skin and expose myself, but my child, that's like a whole new level. And it is fantastic that like, that I, I don't know, by having having someone like yourself and it sort of seeps into other people's lives, doesn't it? And just, you just wait until that time when they actually have to like, they're like holding the door open going, please let me in your room. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. I need to know this now. Mm-hmm. And you're and like, it, hey, come yeah. hang out. We've got yeah. herbal tea. It's all good. Yeah. <laughs> There's a um, there's a poem um, written by uh, a friend of mine, Natasha Dauphin. She's got some really brilliant books uh, of her poetry, and one of them we've written as a post-it on our fridge. And I'm um, I'm probably slightly paraphrasing, but it's a really short poem, and it's something along the lines of, "I am I am eternally grateful for my unconventional priorities." And I read that and I went, oh, that's yeah. going on the fridge. <laughs> yeah, yeah it, it, it's, it is amazing. It's like it, sometimes it feels like a bit of a burden, doesn't it, when you're being like sort of a little bit mocked and laughed at and things. Mm. But actually it is just this beautiful gift of, of wisdom that, you, that you've accumulated and you're able to share with your friends but also your clients and and Mm. the wider community you've written quite a few um books and articles as well so you've got lots of information out there haven't you helping 
people mm. who want to approach this way of life I guess yes and I think one of the things that's so important I mean you know you, you can make connections with so many people digitally which is great but the more you can find a real life person or a few real life people who you can actually physically get to even if it's not every day even if it's yeah. not oh my back door is open come on in um who are on a similar wavelength and on a similar journey it just changes everything because yeah. it takes you from the space which is really easy to find yourself in of oftentimes having to defend why we don't eat those things or yeah. why we don't do this that or the other or why we yeah. choose something else instead to you've got you've got support around you you've yeah. got community around you and it just reminds you that you're not crazy <laughs> yeah I think that's really important because it's you know we're sort of wired for conformity aren't we and you know you um, want you want to be part of the herd you know you want to be accepted because that's where it feels safe and you know that sort of you know ancestral survival you know you need, mm. you need your community around you so yeah it I think it can be really hard for people who are starting on this journey, can't it? To, you mm -hmm. know, and they're being mocked by, <laughs> by mm -hmm. their family and friends or just sort of ignored even. Sometimes it's not even, they don't actually sort of engage with it. They're just like, oh, that's nice, you know, carry on. Mm. Uh, so, sometimes it's just that feeling of, you know, lonely in a crowded room kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. But, um, yeah, when you're able to connect with other people in real life, whether it's through a course or a workshop or going on a, a walk, um, you know, to admire the plants or just, you know, like, Hey, you know, May day or whatever it is, you know, yeah. is coming up. Do you want to come around from a bonfire? Should we put yeah. up a maypole? Yeah. Should we have some fun? You know, and they're like, yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> um, and then you can just talk freely. I've had every single time when I run a workshop, or a course and we sit down for lunch break you can just see everybody go oh just that sigh of relief yeah because you can just talk about what you actually want to talk about instead yeah. of tiptoeing around yeah. stuff um or feeling like you know maybe the odd went out because of how you ordered your lunch or whatever <laughs> it is um and then when you've got people together then you can share knowledge yeah you know that's when it's oh I've then, done this I've tried yeah. that or you know oh have I you love, heard about this yeah. I love on your website because I, I think one of the things that you talk about is actually moving people from that place of like just having knowledge to actually like integrating it and living mm. it because I think that's the other side of it isn't it is it's um you can you can kind of learn all of these things and you can then be like oh I over you get maybe get overwhelmed even and you're like how do I actually like integrate this into my lived existence mm. and I think that's something that's really important to you isn't it is actually moving people from perhaps you know sort of going oh I you know I believe like herbs and plants could help me Mm -hmm. to actually taking them and experiencing the benefits and and making it part of their life long term mm -hmm. and getting people beyond for me it's really important there's a it's it's a natural part of the the learning process often the first stages the early stages are which herb do i quote unquote use yeah. for what symptom yeah pretty much everybody starts there and that's completely fine it's part of the journey but what I love to do is help get people into a place where they're understanding the particular herb in all of its facets. It's like getting to know a person, you know, you go, oh yeah, Sue, she does acupuncture and that's all you know about her. So you call yeah. Sue when you want some acupuncture. Yeah. Um, but 
Sue is perhaps this really fascinating person who's like traveled the world and, you know, uh, ridden with the, I don't know, I'm trying to come up with some really fantastical <laughs> examples. I don't know. Um, been on some massive trek across, you know, transatlantic, I don't know, something. Yeah. yeah. Um, and she, she has and many levels to... She has many yeah. levels and yeah. she's very interesting and you could have all kinds of different conversations with her. Yeah. And she's not just somebody you phone up when you want some acupuncture. Yeah. The other side of that is understanding our bodies, yeah. ourselves. So going, going to, you know, we were talking about the root, but going deeper than symptoms, which I like to call messages from the body. Okay. Oh, I like that. That's really nice. I love that, actually. Yeah, because yeah. it's a symptom isn't an illness in and of itself right. and a a diagnosis or condition is actually a tick list of symptoms aka yeah. messages you've ticked enough of the boxes now we're going to give it a name yeah but that doesn't tell you the root of it that doesn't yeah. tell you what's ultimately you know, those symptoms, those messages, that's your body saying, hey, could you pay attention to this? Or, oh, yeah. I need some help over here. Not, hey, could you shut this up for me? Yeah. That'd be great. Thanks. Because I often say, you know, if you're watching a show on the television and then, you know, somebody, I don't know, calls you from the other room, you say, hang on, I'm coming. You put the TV on mute, you walk out the room, you have your conversation, you sort out whatever you're sorting out. You come back in the room and whatever was happening on the screen before, the plot has progressed. The yeah. characters are now doing whatever. They might not even be people you recognize. Bob and Sue were falling in love in Notting Hill. Yeah. And now they're on a desert island at each other's throats. And you're like, yeah. how did we get here? <laughs> you know, and then yeah. there's some like, you know, guide who shows up and you're like, what? Yeah. <laughs> That's what's happening in our bodies when we're just suppressing symptoms. We're just putting the TV on mute. Yeah. But the show is still going. And then yeah. people end up really unwell. Yeah. And are like, how did I get here? And how do I undo this? And it's yeah. a lot harder. So when I teach people that, and then I help them decode and understand and listen to those messages, okay, you've got a headache. Why? What is that that your body's trying to tell you? And yeah. when we'll use Sue again for an example, when Sue has a headache, it might not be for the same reason that Bob has a headache. Yeah. Yeah, I think this is the thing, isn't it? Where again, it comes down to this conditioning, doesn't it? Like society has kind of programmed us to be like, we we don't have the knowledge like we have to hand we hand our power away don't we it's like mm -hmm. oh I don't feel quite right but I I need to go and ask someone, someone else, else knows what's better. wrong with me yeah like, and like you said I mean I was thinking of when you were saying about the tick sheet I was going back to your like bookworm days and I was thinking it's like reading the contents page of of a book <laughs> and not reading the rest of it basically yeah it's like, you're literally like oh these are the the chapter headings <laughs> that's great oh the book was really interesting well it wasn't <laughs> you, you haven't even read it you've like you've literally read like the the kind of you know the clickbait headline and yeah yeah not actually delved into it and I think that's that's something that I'm seeing more and more is you know people needing to take responsibility Mm -hmm. for their own health and you know I, I mean obviously we we're lucky in this country that we do have the NHS but you know a lot to a lot of our doctors are busy you mm. know and you turn up and you know they've they've got to get you through as quick as possible they don't have time to sit down and like you know ask you those questions like oh you know oh, okay you've got a headache well when do you have a headache like mm. is there certain things that happen is it after you've eaten is it in the morning is it you know when you're feeling a certain way and I think that's what's always I've always liked about like different modalities like herbalism and things is mm. my experience with those kind of practitioners is they just have a lot more time for you and then from that you learn yourself like actually 
oh, actually question like, oh, how am I feeling? Why am I feeling like, what is my body trying to tell tell me by Mm -hmm. how I'm feeling? Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's a whole new kind of language and conversation that's (laughs) actually quite exciting to, to step into. And it's a really empowering one because when you, when you understand the dynamics of your body yeah. as a as a manifestation of nature, that sounds very fantastic, but, <laughs> but we are fantastic. When you understand your body as a manifestation of nature, you understand that it's about the dynamics within it. It's not about necessarily labeling or naming this specific part of the body or that function or, or imbalance or what have you. When you understand that in the context of the whole, your whole person, and then you as the context of the wider whole, the rest of nature, things aren't scary anymore. And when you realize you're not scared of your own body anymore i mean that's a whole other like yeah. you know red pill blue pill moment um but um yeah you know you and the other thing that that enables you to do is tune into your intuition so you really you're aware when something is really off or you're really out of your depth and you're like whoa i need a specialist yeah to help me out now, or this is a genuine emergency. But, you know, for example, um, you know, there are a myriad of childhood viruses that give children rashes. Yeah. Some of them are itchy, some of them aren't, some yeah. of the, you know, the and sequence of different symptoms and what have you. But at the end of the day, Obviously, you you use your intuition and you keep an eye on vitals. And if anything looks, you know, serious and that's beyond your your skill level, then go get somebody who can help you. Um, but at the end of the day, it doesn't actually matter in most instances which specific virus, named virus that is because it's a viral infection and it's got a rash yeah the child needs rest and cuddles and fluids and if they're happy to eat food and if they're not then that's part of their body's process they're going through a developmental leap their immune systems are developing what have you they're preparing for the next stage of life and they'll get they might be uncomfortable and there are loads of herbs that can help with that Mm -hmm alongside the you know supporting the body to to sort out dealing with the virus but it doesn't actually matter which one it is and it's so easy when you don't have that context plus the skills and knowledge to go with it to go oh my god oh my god get to the doctor there's a rash which one is it is it chicken pox is it not is it something else it's like well and I think um, for me as well, something part of my journey is like you're more proactive as well. Like mm. you've got tools that you can use like far quicker. Mm-hmm. So quite often you can, you know, you can almost stop things in their tracks before they've got yeah. that bad. You yeah. know, you, you've, you're like, um, you start to feel like, oh, you know, I'm actually just feeling a little bit run down. Like you haven't even got any like symptoms or maybe you just mm-hmm. noticing that first, like, oh, I'm starting to feel a little bit snuffly. Maybe I've sneezed one or two times, but I'm not ill. Like if I went to the doctor, they'd be like, you're not ill, <laughs> like, which is yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. But you're like, now is the time that my body's going, no, I need a little bit of extra support. And Mm -hmm. that's what I love with, with all of these, with herbs and and things is that you have this amazing like toolkit that you can go, Mm -hmm. this is the time when I can, I can use this and I can, you know, my body's going, I need some help and I can tap into that and Mm -hmm. help it at that stage before, hopefully before it develops. I mean, obviously not all the time. (laughs) Yeah. Sometimes your body just really needs to go through that process, but that, even the happiness to listen to those things that that first little bit for some people it'll it'll be different things they they're not usually headachey and they'll get a bit of a headache or their skin will go a bit dry 
or they'll kind of lose their appetite or whatever it is. Those early signs, when, um, when I teach my intensive course, the first year of students, we pick, we pick apart all these messages and each message, the main things like, you know, fever, headache, um, digestive upset, etc. We always trace them back. So we say, okay, you've got this message. What are the steps that happened before that? And what could happen afterwards if we let it crack on and progress, you know, to sort of full blown, really out of balance. And every time we trace it back, because we work with a blend of Western herbal medicine and Ayurveda, every time we trace it back, it always comes back to the same thing. So without the, you know, Ayurvedic terminology and whatever, it always comes back to you're overstretching yourself. Yep. <laughs> you're not sleeping well enough. Am I allowed to use a swear word? Yeah. <laughs> you're eating crap. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, toxins are building up in the body and your life is out of balance. Yeah. You know, are you driving here, there, and everywhere every single day? Have you got some kind of crazy commute for a job that stresses you the heck out and you don't really want to be at anyway? Which, you know, that is a whole process of shifting that kind of thing. It's not just like, yeah, oh, yeah, just change overnight. your job yeah. and move. It's <laughs> fine. You'll feel better. Like, yeah. obviously, people have got lives, right? Yeah. Um, but they always trace back to those core imbalances. And those early signs are always telling us hey pause reset check in with yourself you know you're great at eating you know stuff that's great for your body but have you been eating a bit extra crap lately yeah. maybe just maybe just pull back on that or you know, you're waking up really tired. You're having a hard time falling asleep. I know the new season of whatever has come out, but you don't need to stay up really late binge watching <laughs> stuff. Just like it'll be yeah. there on iPlayer, or, you know, yeah. whatever it is. Just yeah. go to bed, go to sleep, yeah. get your sleep. Yeah. You know, um, it's in that respect, things are really quite simple. It's um, it's just a whole new conversation with yourself, really, isn't it? Uh -huh. I think. It's like having respect for treating yourself well as well, isn't it? Like, you know, sort of, which is really hard for a lot of us. <laughs> like, yeah. it's really hard. It's not natural at all, is it, for, for most people? Mm -hmm. um, it's a skill that they have to sort of really consciously work on until it becomes more of a habit. Yeah. Um, so I always like to think of, like, sort of, what would you say to someone else? <laughs> and then, yeah, yeah. Sort of like, embody that yourself okay if, if you were your patient or you know you what would you say to a friend you'd be like oh you know why why don't you like have a have the evening off or do this or go and get a nice you know herbal tea or something mm. and yeah it's... yeah and you know we're the going back to us also being nature yeah um we're the, I mean, I haven't had any psychic conversations with animals directly, so I don't know if they do this, but I doubt it. We're the only parts of nature that we know of that like lament over this stuff. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. a tree. Okay. We've had a lot of storms lately in the UK. A tree gets a branch knocked off. The tree doesn't stand there going, Oh, my branch has fallen. No one will ever love me again. Yeah. Will the birds yeah. want to nest in me? I should have yeah. known better as an acorn and grown up somewhere else. You know, yeah. like, oh, it's because of my child. You know, like, whatever. Yeah. Trees don't do that. Yeah. They just generate some sap, protect that, you know, the wounded area so they don't get further infection. Yeah. They heal themselves yeah. we always say to my daughter your body will heal itself I mean obviously we you know we give her herbs as well but we're instilling this at a very early age your body has the capacity to heal itself yeah we had um a tree in our orchard that had gotten sort of split in half um by lightning before we came here so it had sort of the tree and then this really split off looking yeah. bit and we thought oh yeah that's that's dead that's not going to do anything and in the spring <laughs> you still had leaves and and flowers yeah. on it. Yeah, you know, nature just 
cracks on. Yeah, its capacity is amazing, isn't it? I think it's a, yeah. a beautiful lesson yeah. to us, really, in in the resilience, really, isn't it, of mm-hmm. of it all. And um, I mean, actually, part of my sort of um, experience of herbalism really came from actually my own horses and. Um, mm they were in a similar I was in a similar situation where um it had, my, my horse had a, a an illness that um conventional modern medicine didn't really have an answer for mm. and I was looking for ways to try and support him and worked with a herbalist and they were very much into self-selection yeah and yeah, then yeah. she also encouraged me to just take him out into the countryside and just be like let him just kind of forage for himself Mm -hmm. like he has this innate wisdom of like and that was really kind of where I was started looking at like the sort of wild herbs and things that we've got and Mm. he would eat something and I'd be like oh I've got to go and identify it and then I'd read up about like sort of yeah yeah um you know sort of ancestral uses and myths around all the plants Mm and and I know it's something you talk about as well but like it was really interesting watching him because sometimes he'd put something in his mouth and he'd taste it mm-hmm. and then he'd sort of drop it out and it was like he was you know it you know it sort of got into his mouth so he'd, he'd got to that he sort of was using his sense of taste mm-hmm. to be like oh actually no I don't I don't want that that's not what I need right now or it, maybe it's poisonous or you know whatever it was but mm. it actually and that, that's something that you talk a lot about isn't it is actually yes like tapping into our taste and that as a sense and the wisdom that that can give us as well because I think a lot of times we kind of override like our sense of taste and we're like well we have to take this because we've been told and yeah actually maybe it's your body's like wisdom saying oh maybe that's not quite the right one for us or Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean there is a difference because not all herbs are um scrumptious <laughs> and sometimes it is the most appropriate one but that's because the taste so for example wormwood um artemisia of Cynthium, which is where yes that is involved in absinthe <laughs> yeah um but uh wormwood has a a very very particular taste and that's because of the compound in it called thujon and when I take people on workshops and I let them taste that and they all go why you know I always say take a tiny bit you only need a little bit <laughs> I said right you'll never forget that taste but that specific taste is highly antiparasitic that's why okay. it's called wormwood wood yep. because it gets woody as it grows I know because I have one taking over my herb garden that's spreading <laughs> babies everywhere and uh, she will be in check when we re redo the herb garden uh in the spring but and worm because of parasites yeah. so those ta- you know that anti-parasitic taste it might not be f- tasty but it's because it's really potent that's also signaling to you that you don't need crazy amounts of it yeah. it's okay. very potent it's very strong you don't need loads you know we have this tendency because it's been in a lot of marketing in order to sell more things that more is more and more is stronger and more is more potent it's not always that less it's more is more it's that how much you need is how much you need and if you listen to your body it will tell you a lot of times people get a taste for oh yeah i just really into chamomile tea at the moment yeah and they'll just drink it and drink it and and then one day they'll just go you know I don't really fancy it now and we think it's because we've got bored and we've gone off it but it's actually because the need that the chamomile is satisfying in the body has now been fulfilled yeah and now we can move on so whether it was the the bitter principles in the chamomile, which were getting the bile going in the liver and stimulating the digestion, whether it was the cooling aspects that were helping to cool down maybe an overheated gut or an overheated stressed out person, mm-hmm. the you know the the drying properties in chamomile that you know maybe there's just a lot of gloop and gunge building up in the body that needed soaking up the body's gotten what it needs out of it now 
so it can let go of it and move on. Um, you know, it's not something it, herbs, even if you're growing them yourself, nature is not, I should say the rest of nature is not this unlimited pantry for us to just take from yeah. and use you know, infinite chamomile. Yes. Well, how, how do you get infinite chamomile? You do monoculture farming and you spray it heavily yeah. with pesticides, yeah. which is why yeah. you should always get organic chamomile. That's my, my public yeah. service announcement for the day. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it is, it's, um, I mean, a lot of, a lot of the people I speak to, I mean, I was speaking to someone a few weeks ago about, um, essential oils and it was the same thing. It's like, you know, you're, you're going to be putting this into your body or on your body or inhaling it ingesting it and it's really important that like you consider like what else is on that plant and and if it hasn't been produced organically then there may well be some you know slightly unpleasant um, things that have been sprayed on it so mm -hmm. yeah I, I um it is very important I think to be very conscious of where you're sourcing um herbs if you're not growing them yourself um and you know I, I presume that like if you're working with a herbalist they would be able to either provide them themselves like like for you might for your clients or yeah. recommend good places to to buy them Exactly. Yeah. And then of course, you know, you can forage responsibly if you've got that available to you, or you can grow yeah. if you've got the space, time and, and inclination. But yeah, there's the taste element and back to what you were talking about with horses and that innate knowledge. We have that innate knowledge as well. It's just that nobody's told the horses, oh, you know, we're going to burn you at the stake if you keep, you know, munching on that clover yeah, yeah. <laughs> or, or whatever. Um, so that instinct is within us yeah. as well. We've just forgotten what it means. So that's a really key part of how I teach herbalism because it's, bringing that knowledge that you've got within you already up to the surface. And that's why everybody, when they taste something and they, I say to them, don't worry about what herb it is. What does it taste like? Where do you feel it going in the body? How is it interacting with you? What do you feel like it's doing? Yeah. They get it right every time. Yeah. And that's without, and then we reference the books and that's without, um, uh, knowing it, consciously because it's in us that exchange between the plants and us has never been interrupted it's just our knowledge about it has gone through various historical phases shall we say <laughs> yeah I, I i feel like i should just say there for anyone who is um you know perhaps a complete novice with identifying plants is like don't you put something in your mouth yeah. you don't know what it is or exactly. on your body <laughs> yeah. <Yes>. Yes. <laughs> definitely you're you're talking about a specific situation where you're there to guide people and you've made sure that they're yeah you know, trying something that is actually safe to start off with yeah, um, yeah, yeah but yeah first rule of foraging is you have to be able to identify it if you're mm -hmm. remotely not sure then you know, it doesn't Down. go in your body <laughs> so, yeah yeah but um no I, it it is just I just love that there is just all of this knowledge I mean you talked a little bit earlier about um like some of the names of plants as well and that is a clue into like what they do and mm -hmm. and how they can help you and sometimes it's not that you know the there's lots of different common names in different regions as well um mm -hmm. like comfrey is is known as knit bone and it's yes you know, and they, oh and, i love comfrey and they're just like they're so <laughs> obvious as well <laughs> it's like you haven't, you haven't even got to like like you said with the wormwood it's like you know there's there's clues just in in what they were his, historically ancestrally called um, mm -hmm. because they were used and that knowledge was known wasn't it mm -hmm. and it was part of daily life it was part of the fabric of the home you know knowing how to make herbal remedies was the same as knowing how to make your dinner and there were herbs in the dinner 
you know, you, I mean, you want to have this image of, you know, the herbalist of your over her cauldron or whatever, which, okay, we all love to entertain that image. Don't get me wrong. But, but, you know, what was that cauldron? That was the cooking pot for the house in the hearth and dinner was being made and someone come, came in and sneezed or coughed or sniffled or, you know, looked a bit feverish or whatever. And whoever was cooking that dinner took whichever, you know, the appropriate herbs were from, you know, hanging overhead, drying or what have you, and added them in. Yeah. Because that was the medicine. Well, I think, um, you know, something that, you know, people who um, perhaps aren't really into sort of herbal medicine and and things, they, they don't realize, but a lot of are mainstream drugs um in terms of you know therapeutic um medicines a lot of them are actually from you know herbs and plants like the the ingredients that they've isolated and then you know chemically synthesized mm-hmm. are inspired from from plants and and the chemicals and things that they've isolated in plants and actually so there is like this amazing like science behind behind it as well it's not just Mm. um you know sort of feelings and intuition but there is you know science that backs it up and actually you know a lot of the pharmaceutical companies do go out and specifically like look at the ancient cultures and what plants were used and then they use they get those plants and they try and isolate the specific components which they can then synthesize and and produce drugs and trademark yeah (laughs) But the interesting thing with that is it's from the the allopathic perspective that's seen as the, the they're thinking, okay, we're standardizing, we're making this, you know, so that we can measure it. We know the exact potency yeah. and and what have you. Uh and we're, you know, we're we're not reliant on the rest of nature yeah. to have a supply. We can have a supply whenever we want, for example. But the trouble with that is it's an extremely reductionist approach. Oh, we'll find the one compound and we'll isolate it um, and or synthetically reproduce it and we'll put it in a pill. That is like taking, this is going to sound like a bit of a morbid analogy, but you'll remember it. It's like taking the hand off of Michelangelo and saying, go paint the Sistine Chapel. Yep. You you can't. Yeah. It's the context of the whole thing. So where you have um aspirin, uh, which comes from this sort of always debate about whether it's metasweet or willow that it's first from, what have you. Both yeah. of them are high in a compound called salicylates. Um aspirin is then synthesized, you know, isolated, etc., from that compound. On its own. That's damaging the gut lining, which is why excessive aspirin use damages the digestive tract. However, when you've got it in MetaSuite, for example, you've got that compound that gives the pain relief, for example, but it's also in the context of the rest of the plant, which soothes and protects the lining of the gut. <laughs> Yeah. So <laughs> we're not damaging the gut yeah. with the meta suite because we're taking things in context. It's part of the whole. Just like if you take humans and you isolate them from the rest of nature and make them feel like and think and market to them that what they do, well, they can just do whatever they want and it doesn't m- impact anything else then other things get damaged but yeah. they just get ignored yeah it's i think there's just it's just it's just so powerful isn't it and i would just encourage anyone who hasn't um come across it before to um well go and have a look at your website we'll, we'll have all the links available to everyone mm-hmm. in the podcast description because i think you you've got a lot of um 
entry points for people, haven't you? Depending on what level of of interest they have at yeah. that stage, really. <laughs> um, you know, just maybe like I'm a little oh, this is my first experience of it. I'm a little bit curious, and you you've got things that can help people there, haven't you? Or or someone who's actually like going, oh my goodness, this is the piece is what I'm missing have to do. in my yeah. life <laughs> and from my family, and I you know I want to like jump all in and, and go mm-hmm. ahead. Um, you've got you. I think we're gonna we've got a, a link to some resources that we're going to include for people as well of um, yes. a guide that you've written. Yeah. Um, but have you got any advice for for someone who has has listened to this and they're feeling inspired and they're maybe like. Well, what could I what could I do what could I have a like first step of exploring this myself um I would say find a find a local workshop that's in person and I know that there are, if there's like nothing near you in person then find something reputable online I know there's so many brilliant resources available online at the moment um there weren't loads when I started <laughs> <laughs> um but Doing it in person really makes a big difference. You get to ask your questions. You get to see the plant in person. You'll often, you know, do some plant identification with it. So um, it makes a big difference in making you feel like you can do this. Yeah. It gives you that confidence. Yeah. And it also makes it real. It makes it tangible because you're there and you're touching the plants. You know, when you do this kind of, you find an account and you endlessly save their posts on a recipe for this, that, and the other. First of all, you're always beholden to somebody else's recipe. That might not be what you have to hand. And I don't know about you, but I almost never look back at posts that I say. (laughs) I go, oh, that's a good one. Save. (laughs) Never to be seen again. Um, So yeah, find a workshop or something, something in person. I mean, obviously if you're in Yorkshire, come see me. Um, Because I do anywhere in the UK. Because yeah, we're quite we're we're quite a small place. (laughs) Like you could this is you can get around to we can get to Yorkshire fairly easily from most places in the UK. So yes, I think the UK is similar size to the state I'm from. So yeah, (laughs) yeah, Um, yeah. Especially if you want a city break. I mean, I used to live in London. When when I started, I would get out of London to go do something like yeah. this just to really really tune in shift your perspective shift your eyes shift you know the air around you it it, it makes it different so well yeah. and, and going back to what we were saying earlier like it's that starting that new community of people as well so mm-hmm. that you have people that you can like fall back on and they can give you encouragement and support and you can speak your new language <laughs> with them as well and, yes yeah so it's that is that's the other side, isn't it, of of these beautiful workshops and coming together in mm-hmm. person. And I think we we obviously we lost that, didn't we, during COVID a few yeah. years ago. And and it's lovely that now we are in this situation where we can come back into these in person opportunities to to pick up wisdom from each other as well, from everyone's stories that turn up and and are mm-hmm. part of the community. Mm-hmm. And it's more fun. Yeah. Hey, I made this cream. It was really nice. Ooh, yeah. how'd you make it? Would you, ooh, yeah. do you have any extra? Yeah, yeah I'll bring some by. Yeah. yeah. My um, my course, uh, the cohort that uh, finished up their, their first year, they're going on to second year in April. They finished up at the end of last year. And um, they found a, an exhibition of sort of old apothecaries, bottles and ceramics and things in Leeds oh, wow. and we, the group is like should we go let's yeah. go yeah. should we have should we have a nice you know um meal for lunch afterwards so we were out of, out of a field trip in between and you know besides the fact that we all really enjoyed seeing all of these old apothecary things um Everybody was just really happy to see each other again and hang out. It was too short. I mean, it was yeah. it was a day, but it was still too short. So um, yeah, everybody's itching to get in the yurt and get going again. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's, I think I, 
sit there. I mean, I, I think we're probably getting to the time that we yes. <laughs> need to round up. I, not that I want to. I feel like I can, can carry on talking to you for ages and that we've, we've barely scratched the surface. Mm-hmm. But I don't know, is there anything that you really, you know, sort of is sitting on your heart or wisdom that you'd like to share um, today that we haven't covered so far? I guess I would say two short things. One would be whatever you're doing, take it one step at a time. Because it's really easy to get excited and then overwhelmed and then stuck. Yeah. So one thing at a time, whether it's one herb or one way of preparing things or one, one task like growing something, just take it one thing at a time. This is a, a set of knowledge and skills that goes back to the beginning of human history So, you know, pace yourself. You're never going to learn it all and that's okay. And you'll always be learning, which is okay. The other thing I would say is um, just to continue to listen and pay attention to the messages your body is trying to communicate to you, but also to um, the messages around us, it's a really good time to develop the skill of discernment. Yeah. You know, even stuff that is presenting itself as being very healthy or natural or what have you, um, is this something that's really supportive for me? Yeah. It, where is this product or way of doing things or whatever coming from? what's the intention behind it is it really yeah. going to support me yeah. in feeling brilliant yeah or is it actually just to make somebody a lot of money yeah I think I mean that comes back to sort of almost circles back to where we started didn't we with your your friend with the greenwashing and I think it is something that we have over the last I guess really decade um need to be more aware of is the fact that you know some of these buzzwords kind of Mm. seeped into marketing and society for a reason because they you know the big brands realized that people were becoming more aware of it and they wanted to fulfill you know they wanted things to be sustainable and you know that they were produced in a way that was more in harmony with the environment and you know was was good for you and you know it's lots of things like you know the word like natural and, mm-hmm. and the, and which it, has zero, zero requirements yeah. <laughs> behind it yeah and yet um, a herbalist can't make something and sell it on the market that says that it the wording is extremely limited you can't say treat yeah uh support is kind of the furthest you can push the boat yeah. out but still you got to be ca- you know you can't say eczema or what it so it is it is really hard i mean i, I know we said we're wrapping up but actually um it is really hard for for people who are offering these modalities to to share what they're doing not they like the legislation and things is very restrictive um, mm. <laughs> around um complementary and alternative medicine <laughs> and it's it's a lot less restrictive in many respects around um but you know pharmaceutical companies and and what they can and can't do and and i think it's i think it misses the the beautiful wisdom of of what our conversation has been about which is mm. just simply reconnecting to your own autonomy isn't it mm-hmm. and and truly listening to the wisdom that you have realizing that you have wisdom even for the you know for yeah. some, a lot of people that's the first step isn't it is just actually going you know when you feel that something's wrong with you it doesn't matter if other people tell you there's nothing wrong with you or you know you should be able to live with that it's like if you feel that that's not right then do you know start this path start this journey find people like yourself Megan who can help and support you and and take you on this this path to to recovery and rediscovery because that's really Mm. what it is isn't it like you you've you've that's the journey you've taken from your sort of chronic health condition Mm. you've recovered from that completely and you've just discovered this whole amazing world that you're now Mm -hmm. able to share with with everyone else Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, 
it's been absolutely fantastic talking to you and likewise uh, yeah <laughs> and we'll have all the links available for everyone so that they can look you up and and get involved and learn more if they want to but um thank you so much today for your time megan it's been really fantastic and really fascinating talking with you about herbs and how they can support us more in our journeys my pleasure thank you Thank you so much for listening to the Nurtured by Nature podcast. I truly hope this conversation has brought some hope and inspiration into your life. I would love to have these messages ripple out across the world. So if you can, please share this episode with your friends, leave a review on your favourite podcast player and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the next episode. I would love to hear from you, so please feel free to connect with me on the links provided in the podcast description. But most importantly, thank you so much for being a part of this journey with me. But don't forget to simply get out there and enjoy the natural world.